make a start. Um, thank you for coming so early and being here. Um, right, what I want to talk about today is different ways of interacting with your Joomla website remotely, um, i.e. without using your web browser. Um, uh, be that a web browser on your laptop, computer, or uh, mobile device. So, a few words about me first. I'm Garrett Edwards from the UK. I've been developing for Joomla since the Mambo, Mambo's dying days, so I've been around for quite a while. Um, started off uh, with J Events and its add ons, uh, which is, if people don't know about it, it's an event calendar. Um, we have add ons that provide registrations, invitations, reminders, tickets, and so forth. We have a fairly sophisticated layout editor, uh, managing locations and venues, custom fields, um, basically almost anything event related you can do with JEvents and its add-ons. Um, another thing that we have is Easy Layouts, uh, which I did a presentation about last year at Jane Beyond. Uh, it's a graphical layout editor for Joomla content users and contacts and so forth. Um, allows you to create customized layouts based on by category, language, uh, or user specific layout, user group specific layouts. It's basically template overrides without any coding. Um, gives you good control over custom fields, filtering menu items, um, custom edit pages, and so forth. Basically makes Joomla into a CCK. And uh, something called Your Sites, which I'll just mention um, right at the end. Okay, but back to the plot. Um, a web browser isn't the only way to access your Joomla site, or rather I shouldn't say Joomla site, I should say your Joomla content. Uh, why would you want to interact with your website remotely? Um, you might want to share your content with other services, other sites. You might want to propagate updates um, of your content, of the software, um, get content updated um, back on your site. You might want to drive remote applications, um, maybe other websites, so a generalized site might uh, want to aggregate data from specialist child sites and so forth. Uh, you might be interested in web services, mobile home, mobile apps, um, or even home management systems. Um, in J Events, we had a, a user who wanted to get the remote data to tie into a home management system. Um, uh, uh, what was it? One of these um, internet on device um, type things. They wanted all their event data on their basically on their house systems. Uh, you might be interested in website monitoring, <coughs> tracking visitors, sales, um, bug monitoring. I'll mention some of that a bit later. Downtime alerts, tracking the performance of your site. You know how how well does your site work at three o'clock in the morning in Mongolia? You know you've, it's not something you can easily test. Uh, site firewalls, um, monitoring files that have changed on your server. All reasons why you might want to interact with your site remotely. So we'll go into some of those in a little bit more detail now. Um, Feeding data into your site remotely, you might already be getting um, data from third-party websites via m uh, modules and things, but you might want to get local news um, information into your site, um, event or social media feeds, um, weather prices, stock prices, and so forth. Um, and basically, it works both ways. You might want to get data into your site, data out, of out from your site, <coughs> but none of these things um, you'll be doing it via a web browser. They're all different ways of doing it. So there's all good reasons why you might want to interact with your site remotely, but in doing so, there are potential downsides and problems. You know, every time you add an additional entry point into your system, you're adding a potential hacking risk. Um, there's always the risk of third-party sites or third-party services stealing your content. Um, it's something you might not want to happen. You, know, you might want people to use your content, but you might want it attributed to you. And also, how do you get secured feeds so that you can send specific data, specific private data to specific um, groups? And then when you've got these um, services linked into your site, can you trust them? Um, what do they have access to? Are there implications for data privacy and um, any GDPR um, issues to deal with? So now I'm going to go through some of the ways of interacting with sites. Uh, the list isn't comprehensive. I'd be interested to know if I've missed a major category. Let me know at the end. Um, I'm going to concentrate on uh, two or three of them and skim over some of the others which are less interesting. And I'll say up front, I'm not an expert on them all. So uh, don't expect me to be able to answer questions in detail about all the things I'm going to be talking about, OK? Probably the simplest that people may have seen um, and used are RSS feeds. Um, they work in two. Are people familiar with RSS feeds? What they are? Yeah. 
Uh, they're consumed by browsers, feed aggregators, web applications, and so forth. And Joomla supports RSS feeds. Um, into Joomla, you can um, I mean, from Joomla, you can create a uh, Joomla syndication feed module. All that does is creates a link on your site. Um, when you're viewing content um, menu items, it'll give you a link to the RSS feed for that particular menu item. Um, you can also pull in feeds into Joomla to get data from third-party services and show them on a Joomla menu using the Joomla feeds news feeds menu item. So those are things people are probably familiar with, but they have limited um, functionality. Uh, no, th they don't work if you want to share private data um, via secured links. Um, it's hard to control what data is passed through. It's not necessarily very, very well formatted. You've got not, not much control over it. Um, but one plus side is it's built into Joomla. The downside of that is, as far as I know, um, you can only block it um, using a plugin. I don't know if there's anybody know another way of blocking the RSS output from Joomla. Um, so if you don't want other people to be taking your content, you need a plugin of some sort to be able to block it. Otherwise, people just type the URL into your web browser and they can get all the data from your site using the RSS feed. Uh, perhaps that's something Joomla should have as a switch off, because I know some sites won't want their data going via an RSS feed. Something else people have probably used are specialist uh, modules that load data from third-party sites. Uh, most commonly used ones would be social media feeds, Twitter, Facebook. You also might have local weather on your site and so forth. Those are very familiar um, modules that people use to bring data into their sites. Um, little plug of something that we've developed um, is a mechanism to share your Joomla modules between websites. I'll just show you how it works in a second. Uh, we, we call it the remote loader or the remote module loader. And it allows you to take a module from your website and show it on another Joomla website, on a WordPress site, and so forth. Um, it was initially developed for um, latest events on our calendar. People wanted to show their latest events on other sites. But it works with other, um, other uh, modules as well. I'll give you a quick demonstration of that. I want to come out of that. Try to remember where I put it. Right, here. This module here, loaded from JEvents. Um, if I was to show you the JEvents website, assuming the internet is actually working. There, you see this module here, highlights. Um, it's got a few links and things about some of the services that we have. Uh, on this page here, this module is lifting that content. Um, so it's basically happening this server is talking in the background to the other server and actually getting the data there. And there are options for passing JavaScript and CSS as well. So that's a little little nifty way that people might not, familiar, might not be familiar with for getting data from your remote uh, site. So back to the presentation. Um, there are other uh, ways of getting and uh, receiving data, some specialist needs. Uh, drive those. So uh, with J events, we need to be able to provide iCal imports and exports. You know that's, that's probably not relevant unless you have a, a calendar. There's a protocol on the web called WebDAV, um, and some of the document management add-ons for Joomla use that to allow you to manage files. It's basically a, a mechanism to allow interactive content between a device and your website data. CalDAV is a specialist version of that for. Um, for calendars. Um, so I'm not going to go any more into any more detail about that, but it's, you know, if you're interested in that sort of thing for file management, um, I'd suggest you look at some of the document management add-ons. Uh, something that we use um, for l is to look at site errors. You know, if, you, if your site is going down for particular types of users or they're seeing error messages on your site, it's, it's good to know that. Or even if this, the error messages are suppressed, you want to be able to see when people are getting white pages, um, or when you're running out of memory, or whatever. Um, are people familiar with the Rollbar? Have they ever used Rollbar? So that's one I'd recommend, rollbar.com. Um, they provide a free service up to a certain number of errors. Um, 
we've never got anywhere near needing to, to pay for it, and we get plenty of errors on our site. So, um, uh, Stephanie, it, it's an easy one to implement. You just stick it in, um, it's a preprocessor in PHP. Uh, so it's one line of code, and it um, sticks the its error tracking uh, protocol in place. And we get messages every day for the errors. You know, there were 23 of this sort of error, or there are six of that sort of error. Um, so you get m notifications, so it's very useful. Um, and some of, them, some of these types of services offer push notifications when the web, so that's a different thing. You might want also to monitor your sites for downtime. Um, there are services that will do that and send you push notifications when your site is down. Um, but Rollbar, definitely one, if you haven't tried it, recommended for um, keeping track of what's going on in your site when you're not there. Site protection, um, another thing that we've used is something called Clean Talk. Um, I think it mainly started off for comments um, on blogs and so forth, but it's a service that uh, does anti-spam and firewall um, checking on your site. So when people are signing up for user registration or they're posting on your forum or they're adding comments to your blogs, um, CleanTalk can basically stop spammers. It's, it's not guaranteed, but it does it by checking the content, looking for suspicious patterns in the content, looking for IP addresses. They, they have a large database of um, uh, spammers around the world. And um, they, when they spot ad um, email addresses or IP addresses, they can basically block them from re registering on your site. Um, I've got a, 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 on that aside, there's a PR I've got in for the core for the user registration process, um, which tries to spop, stop spammers from using the user registration confirmation emails from being used as spam. Um, until that's accepted, I thoroughly recommend that people use uh, Clean Talk or that sort of service on your user registration. Otherwise, you'll be getting uh, Russian spammers um, using your, event your site registration to send out malware and phishing emails. Uh, it's nothing against the Russians, it's just that they're the only ones I know that are doing it. <coughs> um, right, Joomla has some uh, interesting APIs built in to allow you access to your. Um, your data, uh, Com Ajax. Have people used Com Ajax at all? One or two. Um, and uh, there are some add-ons available to in to incorporate uh, REST interfaces. I'm going to go through those in a little bit more detail now. Uh, so Com Ajax is a Joomla component, um, and it's used by a lot of um, search modules and so forth. You know, when you when you type in a search and it gives you the results dynamically, um, most of those use uh, Com Ajax. <coughs> And it's basically a component that's a simplified entry point to access the data on your site via JSON or XML. And you'd interact with it by passing a URL. So in th there's a good uh, documentation um, page I'll give you the link for on the next one, on the next page. But it's typically you just pass in the, the name of the plugin and the format that you want the data, and it sends the results. So um, if you give me a second, I'll show you that in action. Uh, where is it? Here. So, um, I don't can you see the URL at the top? It's a bit, um, no, I'm just making that big, isn't it? Do you see here, uh, basically that's the URL. It's the um, website name, which I don't try accessing it because it's running on my laptop. It's not uh, a real domain. And I'm just passing in the name of a plugin which I've just stuck in, one that I've, I've hacked to add a little message. And I'm just adding a message. This is a message from the plugin into the plugin. So it's just a mechanism to um, give you a quick interface to the back end. But the a good thing about it is it's JSON, and it means that you can write your web applications and get your data using Com Ajax. Go back here. <coughs> Um, so that's the documentation link um, using your Joomla Ajax interface. So you can do it via a plugin or a module. Um, it's quite easy to set it up, but it doesn't explain a lot about how you'd use it. You need to write, write your access to the data. You know, it doesn't provide you any methods to access the data. Uh, you need to write those yourselves. Um, it's lightweight and fairly fast, but on my development server, it takes 0.13 seconds just to reach the entry point of the script. So if you're doing type ahead or you're doing um, a lot of interaction with the site, uh, that 0.13 seconds can be a bit of a, a, a drag on performance. Um, so because of that, we actually wrote our own 
uh, system plugin as an alternative for in J events. So you can get that with J events. It's completely free. Um, it's a little system plugin, and our plugin because it is gets triggered a lot earlier than the Com Ajax component only takes 0.4 seconds. So it's basically um, three three to four times faster than Com Ajax in terms of an interface, and it provides you the same sorts of um, access to the Joomla data. Um, and also, another benefit of that is that um, you don't need to have an installable plugin or module. It's there's just a particular format for the file. Um, so if anybody's interested in that, I can explain how that works um, later on. So REST uh, interfaces. Are people familiar with REST interfaces? Yeah, about a third. Um, I know there have been lots of um, presentations at Jane Beyond and things in the past. Um, it's not something I've used a lot. Um, but it's a useful mechanism. What this does is it provides you some of the framework and the structure for accessing the data that you don't get with ComAjax. Um, and it allows you typically to share data with mobile um, or other applications. Um, I know two, two real options in Joomla. Um, so there's Tech Joomla's Com API, and uh, there's C API, which is a commercial extension. Uh, does anybody know of another? Which? Say again? J back J back end, right? Yeah. Red red component have one, do they? Right. Okay. Well, the, these are the ones I've looked into, so I'll just talk talk about these briefly. Um, so Tech Joomla's Com API. It's a free download, open source. Um, there is some documentation, but it's limited. Um, they've only got like three or four pages of documentation. Um, one of the nice things about most REST interfaces is that you'll get a, an exploratory interface to find the methods that it offers. Um, I'll show you that in a second on, an, on the C API, but um, Tech Joomla doesn't currently have that sort of drill down um, system for accessing the data. Uh, it does use the core Joomla data models and it allows filtering, but again, in the documentation, it doesn't explain how that filtering works. So. You need to look into their plugins, into their code, and you say, oh, yes, this is the, the syntax they want for the, the filters. Um, so to use it, you need a bit of coding e experience. But then if you're probably writing a um, mobile phone application, you'll probably have some developers working with you in any case. Um, I'll give you a quick e example of how that works. So where are we? Let's come back here. So here's Tech Joomla's uh, REST interface. So if you just access it, unfortunately, it just gives you an error message. Um, so you need to construct um, specific menu items. So I've got one here for displaying all the articles. Um, so there's a th there's a, an interface on top, a JavaScript and CSS interface on top that converts the data into a format that's displayed um, in a meaningful way in your browser. If I was to just look at the web source, you'll see it's just, can you see that? It's just JSON there. But when it's displayed on the um, page, you can look at the JSON version, formatted the raw data, the headers, and so forth. And it's just a long, long list of all the articles. Um, to make it more helpful for me, I modified their router slightly and fixed an issue with their um, filtering. So I can now show um, uh, featured articles. Um, I, I modified the router so that I could actually pass the um, parameters in in the URL as opposed to uh, as um, query strings. But basically, it allows you to filter, in this case, just the featured articles or um, you might want to look at just the, in my case, the meat dishes on this site here. So that's Tech Joomla's. Um, it allows you to fetch data, to push data to the site, to update users, to um, create articles and so forth. So it, it, it's got all the mechanisms you need to, to be able to manage your site or access your site using a web application on a phone or on a, um, another device. So I'll go back to the CAPI one. So CAPI is a commercial add-on um, for Joomla. It's got very extensive um, API and very extensive documentation. 
Um, and it has a very easy to navigate API exploration, which I'll show you in just a second. It has different ways of accessing the data. So when I first looked at it, um, I thought that their content um, links would be a good way to get the data, but that's, that doesn't use the Joomla content and data models. If you want to use the data models, you need to use their, their component model data path. Um, but the advantage of that is it gives you the Joomla data model and therefore you can apply the Joomla filtering. But to be able to use the filtering, you therefore have to look at the Joomla model and see how Joomla passes the filters in into the, the core. So again, it's not something that works straight out of the box with no technical knowledge. Um, but it has a very nice um, exploration interface. I'm not sure if that's a technical term, but it's uh, what I've um, discovered. So their root one it fetches um, fetches this exploratory interface. So these are all the um, paths into um, the, uh, the the interface. So we can scroll down, look at content. If I click on content, it shows me I can get content list all. Click on that, I can try it out, um, and it gives me the data here. So and it gives you the URL that you would use. So it's a very neat way. Now um, Tech Joomla has the interface to do this, but it hasn't got the code in place to, to interact with this sort of, um, with Swagger, uh, which is the, the, um, the system for displaying these, uh, these entry points. Um, I was talking about the content. So this, this one, content list all, that's the mechanism that just fetches the data using uh, a standalone query. Um, there's no filtering on that by um, access levels or anything. It just dumps all the data. So it's probably not very practical or not what you want. Um, so you'd probably be looking at the component, uh, component uh, model data. That would be the one you'd be looking for. And unfortunately, you need to, you know, the filling in these parameters is not immediately obvious what, what they should be called. So um, I worked this one out earlier on. If I show you now uh, this one, um, to look at the meat dishes. Um, can you see at the top, I've got option content, but it's a capital C type is articles with a capital A, and then the prefix is content model, capital C, capital M. So some of this stuff, it's y you need to know a bit about how the Joomla models are called and what the, the files are called to be able to get, get the data. But once you've figured that out, it's a very um, neat interface. Um, they've got their own, um, they don't use com Ajax for getting the, uh, the interface. They've got their own um, entry point into Joomla. Um, so it's, it's slimmed down and it's a bit faster than, than Com Ajax. The downside is if you're using um, admin tools or something like that from Akiba and you've modified your HD access file, you'll probably find that this is blocked. Um, so you need to add it, an as a, as add it as an exception. So any questions or thoughts on REST before I move on? Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Both of them, both of them provide um, tokens. Um, so here you can see the token interface. Um, you can get a token. You can authenticate by logging in. You can. There's com users as well, so you can log in um, as as part of a, of a sequence of interactions. So it'll it'll use cookies and things, and you have an authenticated um, mechanism. Um, but then again, you know, if you, if you're wanting something more sophisticated, if you want to um, get specific data for a very specific need, you'll probably find with both of them that they're, they're constrained. Uh, the nice thing about the Tech Joomla one, though, is it's got an, a very easy and um, plugin architecture. So you can write your, write your own plugin and create your own entry points um, and, uh, and access the data there and piggyback off their token and everything. So you don't have to write your own token code. You can reuse theirs and, and have your own entry points via the plugins. Right, um, back to the presentation. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is remote management of sites. Um, basically, a lot of people have a lot of sites to manage. You know, when you've got 20, 30, 200, 300 websites you want to keep up to date, um, there are various services that provide um, a way of doing that remotely. Um, Joomla updates, uh, WordPress, PrestaShop updates, some of these services offer um, all of those under one umbrella so you can manage the updates of all your different um, sites. Um, you can do extension widgets, updates. 
A uh, lot of them will offer site uptime monitoring. We mentioned that in passing earlier. Um, and also backup management, generating backups remotely, bringing them into a central server. So you can basically say, generate backups over 300 sites and download the um, backups to a central place. Some of them offer uh, backup restoration as well. So in no, uh, no um, well, it, is, it isn't a particular order, it's just alphabetical. Um, there might be other services out there as well. Um, but the ones I know as, as my Joomla perfect dashboard, Watchfully, um, people have probably heard of, of those. Um, and some hosting companies will offer updates of um, your sites as well. Um, but the problem, of course, with the hosting company is if your sites are hosted with four or five different hosting companies or on four different cloud servers with the same hosting companies, you might not be able to aggregate that, um, that sort of remote management. So I think these services have got a, they're a great benefit, um, but they can be pretty expensive. Uh, the monthly fees quickly add up. If you're managing 100, 150 sites, um, you'll end up paying these companies a lot of money. Um, I know a lot of people complain that they're slow. Uh, the updates take a long time. The interfaces are unresponsive at times. And there are downsides. They give you, you're ending up giving full access to your sites, to the back end, um, to your admin interface, to yet another service provider. Uh, so there is data and site security concerns, um, data privacy and GDPR issues potentially going forward as well. If some of these services are run from the States, um, you've got outside of Europe um, organizations, in organizations with full access to your data, backup stored internationally and so forth. Um, and another big issue, which I know uh, some people find problems with, is that they don't work on intranets or behind firewalls. Um, because, well, that's the whole point. You know, they're a software as a service. They can't access your intranet. So you can't manage the, um, your updates. I know some universities have um, 100, 200 uh, Joomla websites. They want to keep them all up to date, but they can't use these services. So the question is, is there an alternative? Um, well, there is, or there's going to be soon. Um, your sites, which is something that we've been working on. I'm just going to give you a s sneak preview of that now. Uh, it's not yet ready for launch, um, so uh, it's not uh, completely finished, but to give you an idea of what we're going to be able to offer. Uh, where are we here? I'll try and make that a bit bigger so you can see it. So it's a bit off the screen, I'm afraid, on this side. Let's see if I can make that a bit. So it's basically just a Joomla component, um, and it allows you to uh, create lists of websites, um, find out what versions you've got installed on them, so I can select these sites. Um, find out if there are Joomla updates, extension updates. Um, I can upgrade Joomla. Um, I c you know, I can even set up um, new sites installing Joomla remotely. Installing your sites is a little plugin um, that allows the interaction to take place. In essence, what it is is the same sort of service as these software as a service providers give you, um, but something that you would install. So you'd have it on your own server. Um, where you wouldn't need to provide all your data to somebody else, you're secure, you know where it is. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically basically what we're we'll offering with backups and all that sort of service that you'd expect. So if I go back to here. Yeah, as I said, it's installable, runs on your server. There's not gonna be any exorbitant software as a service um, fees. So whether you're using uh, three sites or 200 sites, you know, you're not going to see um, changes in the cost. Uh, you control your data, your own data and security. It'll work behind intranets and firewalls because it's on your server. Um, and you're not at the mercy of third-party um, service provider performance. So, as I said, that was a demonstration. Um, that's the end of the presentation. If you uh, leave me a business card, I can send you a copy of your sites to um, have a play with when it's uh, ready and at that state. Um, any questions? Yep. Uh, 
Uh, uh, it certainly works with authentication. Um, I don't know about IP filtering. Did I see? I thought I saw. Does it work with? Um, can you do IP authentication? Not yet, but you could add it into your own plugin. Yeah. So if you put if you wrote your own plugin, you could even write your own plugin as a as an, an inheriting from the articles plugin, for example, and add an IP filter at the beginning of that. So yes, you could you could do that. Yes, so did people hear that? There's, there's a GitHub um, uh, repository for Com API. So I'll be putting in my fix for the featured articles uh, filter and my suggestions for changes to the router into that. Um, so yes, the authentication and IP filtering, yeah. Pardon? Right, yes, yes, yeah. Anything else? No, stunned silence, thanks. <laughs> right, okay. Well, actually, just ask the question, how, how many people do use any of these services I talked about with ac accessing their sites from back end in the in remotely? Yeah, so about half, yeah. Yes, well, that, yes, that's what the CAPI uses the Slim framework as well, yeah. Yes, but the, the thing is, it ends up being a large installer package, so. Because you know, in that that case, they're loading up um, Slim and Swagger and um, Symphony and you know, four or five other things as well. So it adds up to quite a big installation package. Right. Yeah. So that was th the comment was that Slim, which is the f one of the frameworks used to generate the REST interface, um, and is, am I right? The Slim man manages the the generation of the entry point table and things. Yeah, so that basically, that I think the, the the file. If you look at the code in in um, these REST interfaces, th there's a set format for the comments that you put in, that the Slim framework interprets and generates the um, generates the, the the documentation for the interface. So, any other suggestions? Anybody? Any any other? Have I missed anything? Any major ways of interacting with your site remotely that I've missed? Nope. Okay. Great, thank you.